Um, and I, I, I think why I, I think I know why Mitt did not punch back last night. He had a chance. I mean, chance after chance after chance to literally go, go after him and just tear the president apart. I mean, it would have been like taking a frog in eighth grade biology class. That's what it could have looked like last night. On Libya, he gave him a total and complete pass. I don't even begin to understand it. On Afghanistan, the same thing. He could have actually hit him with the actual numbers of the war. Mr. President, has been going on for 12 years. Eight with Bush, four with you. Two-thirds of the money spent and the troops' lives lost have happened on your watch. That's all he needed to say. Nothing, not a word. Instead, he mostly agreed with the president's policies. On Egypt, a total pass. He mostly agreed with the president's policies. He's in bed with the Muslim Brotherhood. No, mm -mm. he's meeting with the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House. No, mm -mm. his his national security guy said this: a very uh, heterogeneous group, uh, largely secular, secular, which has eschewed violence and has decried uh, Al Qaeda. They are currently they are currently calling for jihad on Israel. So I don't know about the eschewing violence thing anymore, Mr. President, not to mention the spread of the Muslim Brotherhood in the highest places in our own government. Squeezing in some dis- domestic issues, Obama actually had the nerve to say this last oh. night. And we've got to make sure that we reduce our deficit. Unfortunately, Governor Romney's plan doesn't do it. But yours does? Romney let that go, even though Obama had just kicked the door open for Mitt to obliterate him with, I'm sorry, your plan added five and a half trillion dollars. That's your idea of reducing the deficit? Because that's what you've done. You have a track record of destroying the U.S. Uh, uh, debt and, by the way, never passing a budget. Not destroying the budget, never passing a budget, Mr. President. And the most glaringly egregious pass given by Romney on the night. That's right. Uh, you are familiar with jobs being shipped overseas because you invested in companies that were shipping jobs overseas. Oh, my gosh. And, uh, you know, that's, you're right. I mean, that's how our free market works. But I've made a different bet no, on you, American workers. No, stop, 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 stop. He goes into GM. No, Mr. President, you took all of our money and invested in a company that is shipping jobs overseas. Albert Pujols is up to bat. Bases are loaded. It's hanging right there. I don't even mean it. it's it's like a cartoon. It's like we've taken a string and 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 tied it to the ball and we're hanging it over the plate. Albert just swing the damn bat is what I'm screaming in my in my luckily very thick walled <laughs> living room. Uh-huh. Mr. President, you continue to tout the American jobs you saved, Mr. Romney should have said. The cars you're selling to China when the reality is 70% of all GM vehicles are now made outside of the U.S. That's right, Mr. President. I love GM, too. My father was an auto guy. But the fact is the American PAC taxpayer is still $24 billion in the hole. And GM CEO Daniel Akerson was just in China February 2011 bragging about all of the plants and the jobs GM is outsourcing now to China and promising more jobs. He said it was all part of GM's commitment to working in China, with China, and for China. That's a quote, Mr. President, from the GM CEO. Mr. President, you saved a company that sounds uh, like, a, like a company more committed to China than to the United States. You should look that one up, Mr. President. And by the way, if I invite if I invested in my portfolio the same way you did, because anybody who was watching the last debate, I said, let's look it up. People who did look up know that you invest in China in your portfolio. And by the way, one other thing you have to clear up is you said that you have a uh, a much smaller pension than than I do. No, Mr. President, as it turns out, once you look that up, you have a much bigger pension than I do. And you're invested in China and the Cayman Islands. But here's the difference, Mr. President. My blind portfolio might have invested in companies in China, but you, sir, you, sir, took our tax dollars and purposely invested in GM while they are talking about shipping jobs overseas. Those are the facts, Mr. President. Look it up. Now, those are some of the things that maybe President 
Obama should have heard last night. But he didn't, even though Mitt Romney would have to be dead to not know this information. Mitt Romney did not blow it last night. He made a choice. This is not, let's be very, very clear. I've seen presidential debates where the candidate blows it. He didn't blow it. He made a choice. Chris Wallace said last night he was surprised that this was the choice that he made, and he wrote to one of his campaign aides and said, what is he doing? What is the strategy? And the aide said, this is all Mr. Romney. This is exactly what Mr. Romney has decided how he was going to handle it. I strongly believe that Mitt Romney is probably one of the most prayed-for men on the planet right now. I believe Mr. Romney prays on his knees every day. I know he prays before the debates. I don't know if it was the right thing, but I believe he's being guided, and I believe he feels it's important to be less contentious. It may be that he's doing exactly what the Lord wants him to do right now. A lot of people that are conservatives and who have been walking down this road for a long time, we wanted, we wanted him to eviscerate the president last night, metaphorically speaking. But our ways aren't necessarily his ways. And I hope and pray and believe that Mitt Romney is trying to seek out his way. The event is in the hand of God, to quote George Washington. We are now 14 days away. In two weeks' time, America goes to vote for the next president of the United States. In two weeks' time, we go to a polling booth. We close the curtain, along with the dead people that voted in the other booth. And we choose. And the path couldn't be clearer. It just couldn't be clearer. Last night, you saw somebody who took the stage that appeared to me to be George Washington. Now, a guy who I don't necessarily agree with. I mean, it's going to be... I hope Romney understands that um, just because we vote for him doesn't mean we agree with him on everything. And uh, just because we may stand against him on certain policies, that doesn't mean we've, uh, we hate him. We just believe in principles. And some of the things that he said last night, I don't agree with at all. But that's where he is. And I think that the American people have a very, very clear choice. Mitt Romney is trying to do the right thing and trying to be an honorable man, which I haven't seen in Washington in a long, long time. And he made a conscious choice. I think he could have eviscerated him last night. But he didn't. I don't know why. I think you saw last night, for those with eyes and ears, you saw somebody whose model may be George Washington or Abraham Lincoln, and another whose model is Saul Alinsky. One was dealing with things exactly the way Saul Alinsky would deal with things. The other was dealing with things the way Washington would deal with things. The question, the only one that remains is, are we more Washington or more Alinsky now? And we decide in 14 days. 